right now on 5 on your side at 10. Not too humid tomorrow, then heat and humidity return for Saturday. I'll tell you how long it'll be sticking around. It's an alarming headline, sudden adult death syndrome. Our Verify team debunks claims it's linked to vaccines. First tonight, shot on the job. A fast food employee rushed to the hospital. The search tonight for the armed robber who pulled the trigger. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. Ann Allred has the night off. Tonight, that young fast food worker is recovering. The robbery happened in the middle of the afternoon at the White Castle in University City. It's located in a busy area along Olive Boulevard. Our Robert Townsend is live outside the restaurant with the latest. Robert. Mike, tonight police are still looking for that bold robber. They say about six hours ago he walked inside this white castle with a gun and demanded money. Police tell us before employees handed over the money, the man started shooting inside the fast food restaurant. Again, as you just mentioned, a female worker was shot. Right now, our, our hearts and prayers with the victim, our employee, because when one of them hurt, we all hurt. Paramedics rushed the victim to a hospital. I talked to a White Castle employee off camera. Now he told me his co-worker who was shot is 16 years old and has worked at the White Castle for six months. Police say after the shooting, the robber ran off with the cash. Officers searched the area with a canine, but again, they never found him. White Castle employees are relieved. Their young co-worker survived the frightening situation. She's doing good. I've had a chance to talk to her family. Um, she's at the hospital and she's doing great. She's talking. She's alert. Several employees were inside the restaurant at the time of the shooting. Nobody else was hurt. The White Castle right now is closed. It, it closed several hours as a result of the shooting. Now, if you know anything about what happened here, call the University City Police. Live in U City, Robert Townsend, five years side. And tonight, a woman is recovering from stab wounds after she tried to fight off a purse snatcher. It happened about three hours ago on MLK near Kings Highway in North St. Louis. The victim was taken to the hospital. Police took a suspect into custody. This happened just feet away from a gas station where a mother was shot and killed Sunday night. Tonight, a man is in custody accused of attacking an employee at a St. Louis grocery store. It happened just f it happened at 5 a.m. after the Fields Food Store near Lafayette Square opened. Police say the suspect walked in with a gun and a knife. The store's owner says the 51 year old store manager fought back. Deliberately attacked him, uh, started with a fist to the face. Uh, there was a weapon pulled. Our, our, uh, my manager defended himself, and at that time, another weapon, a knife, was pulled, and he was cut and lacerated on the face and the hand. The owner says the worker is recovering and should be okay. He added the man had been previously banned from the store. Tonight, President Biden is responding to the Supreme Court decision, which clears a major hurdle for gun owners seeking licenses to carry and conceal a weapon. I think it's a bad decision. I think it's, and I think it's not reasoned accurately, but I'm disappointed. In a 6-3 ruling, the Supreme Court struck down a New York gun control law requiring people to demonstrate a special need for a license to carry a concealed weapon outside of their home. The high court ruled the Constitution provides a right to carry a weapon outside the home. Even though this involves New York State, the local gun owners are weighing in on the decision tonight. Five on your side's Travis Cummings is here with how that decision might impact those in Missouri and Illinois. Travis? Yeah, Mike, tonight the law we're looking at requires people who want to get a concealed carry license to demonstrate a special need for one beyond self-defense. Now, this comes in the midst of a violent summer from mass shootings to gun-involved street crimes. We have an inalienable right to keep and bear arms for self-defense, and they have just secured and protected that for us once again. The U.S. Supreme Court voting 6-3 to three Thursday against New York's century-old concealed carry law, demanding residents in the state who want to carry a gun outside their home need to demonstrate a, quote, proper cause. Challengers arguing the Second Amendment protects the right to carry firearms outside the home 
for self-defense. Manager Jim Tomlinson seeing gun owners come and go at Metro Shooting Supplies in Bridgeton says it's going to do at least one thing for Missouri, where no permit is necessary to carry a concealed handgun if the person is at least 19 years old. It's going to reassure people that the Supreme Court is in fact protecting our constitutional right to carry, to keep and bear arms, uh, regardless of whatever political rhetoric or ideology might be floating around in Washington at the time. Meanwhile, in Illinois, things are a bit stricter. A gun owner must show firearm owner identification cards and weapons that don't have ID numbers are illegal. Subsequently, groups in both states working to increase gun control with violence out of control. Illinois State Police issuing $2 million in grants this week to local law enforcement agencies to help reduce and prevent illegal possession and use of firearms and the crimes that follow. Moms demand action saying, quote, this decision won't stop our grassroots army from doing what we've done for a decade, fighting to keep our families safe. Tomlinson says it's not the firearms, but rather education and enforcement for the people who use them that need some work. Whatever you legislate, it's only going to affect law abiding citizens. Now, today's decision comes as the U.S. Senate just about an hour ago passed gun safety legislation for the first time in 26 years. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which now goes to the House, will establish an enhanced background check process for gun buyers under the age of 21 and provide federal funding to implement state red flag laws. Mike. Travis, thanks. Tonight, a Cape Girardeau County woman is facing charges in connection to a woman's death. Investigators say Teresa Bumgartner was one of the last people to see Jesse Wilfong alive, but never reported her missing. Her body was found inside a barn on a property near Baumgartner's home. Right now, Baumgartner is not charged with murder, only tampering with evidence. The Sheriff's Department says it expects more charges involving more people. In less than 10 hours, children under five years old will be able to get vaccinated against COVID-19 in St. Louis County. It comes after the CDC just signed off on children in that age group to actually get the vaccine. Brent Solomon is live in Berkeley with more on the rollout. Brent. Mike, here at the John C. Murphy Health Center, doors will open at 8 a.m. for parents to come bring their young children in to get a COVID shot. It's one of two locations here in the county that you can now do that. And one doctor told me today you should really consider it. Children say the darndest things. Four-year-old Chloe was listening as her mom and I talked. She has two daughters. I, I do have an older daughter who we decided to get vaccinated, um, but under five, I think I'm going to wait. Seven-year-old Madeline didn't have any problems, but mom just wants to make sure the vaccine will be just as effective for younger children. We're not seeing, you know, any unusual incidents of side effects in the small children um, outside of the very minor things that we saw overall with the older children and young adults. It's why Dr. David Unstad of St. Louis Children's Hospital is excited. The CDC is now making COVID vaccines available to children under five. That's a population that not only could get more sick um, with COVID-19, but also carry it, spread it to other individuals, etc. According to the CDC, since the pandemic began, there have been more than 2 million confirmed COVID cases among children six months to four years old. More than 200 children have died. Right now, St. Louis County has online appointments available for young children beginning Friday. Come on, Brian. Ziana Edwards has questions. Because how would you know how your kid will react off of it? But because she was vaccinated and had no problems, she's keeping an open mind. Yeah, I think about it. Oh, if it becomes like a school mandate, um, it keeps her in school. I'll consider it, but I'm not in a rush. All right, now parents can also show up to the South County Health Center in Sunset Hills tomorrow. Both locations will allow walk-ins, but appointments are recommended. By the way, the St. Children's, uh, St. Louis Children's Hospital is also taking appointments online. I've placed all of this information for you on KSDK, KSDK.com. Check it out right now. We're reporting live tonight. Brent Solomon, back to you. You may have seen articles online about young people dying unexpectedly from sudden adult death syndrome. Our Verify team explains why claims it's linked to vaccines are false. Here's Brandon Lewis.
On June 8th, British tabloid The Daily Mail published an article with an alarming headline about sudden adult death syndrome, or SADS. Some social media users then appeared to relate SADS to vaccines. So let's verify. Is sudden adult death syndrome, also called sudden arrhythmic death syndrome, linked to vaccines? Our sources are the Mayo Clinic, the SADS Foundation, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and Dr. Pyle Coley, cardiologist and co-founder of Cherry Creek Heart. We want to tell you up front that all of our sources say no, sudden adult death syndrome is not linked to vaccines, nor is SADS a new condition. SADS is a term that describes an unexpected cardiac death in young adults, primarily people in their 30s and 40s, as well as younger athletes. SADS is not listed in the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, which tracks potential side effects from all vaccines that have been given since 1990, including the COVID-19 vaccine. It's mind-blowing to me where that came from. But the sudden arrhythmic death syndrome is a very specific phenomena, and that being caused by the vaccine is not something that has been reported in the vaccine database and not something we have seen with prior vaccinations. So, no, sudden adult death syndrome is not linked to vaccines. The Mayo Clinic says SADS is sometimes caused by a genetic and undetected condition. And when a person's heart begins to beat quickly, such as in athletes during competition, or the heart loses its rhythm after a chest injury, it can lead to sudden death. With you or verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. What would you like us to verify? Send an email to verify at ksdk.com. The NBA draft happening tonight and a basketball standout from the Metro East is still waiting to see which team calls his name. E.J. Liddell, a star at Belleville West in Ohio State, was not picked in the first round. The second round, though, is now underway. We have a crew in Belleville where Liddell is watching with family and friends tonight, and we'll have much more coming up in sports. Lawsuits keep piling up against the St. Louis County Police Department. What he did was really wrong, and I'm not okay. Tonight, a woman who says she was sexually harassed by a park ranger commander is talking only to the I-team. Her claims the department didn't do enough to stop it. It's hot and steamy Saturday, plus the best chances of rain we've had all week. I'll time it out coming up. Former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens is facing political backlash from his own party. A new Republican political group is spending more than a million dollars on ads targeting the current frontrunner in Missouri's U.S. Senate race. This is in reaction to the disturbing ad Greitens released this week claiming he's hunting rhinos, which stands for Republicans in name only. Show Me Value says it will run TV ads condemning Greitens through the end of the month. Dates for a special election to fill former St. Louis Board of Alderman Lewis Reed's seat have been set. The first election will be held on September 13th, where voters can cast a ballot for more than one candidate. Then the top two vote getters will square off on November 8th. Right now, former Alderman Reed and two other former aldermen are facing federal fraud and bribery charges. St. Louis County could be headed for even more costly settlements with people accusing police leaders of retaliating against whistleblowers. In all, five people have filed lawsuits since a jury awarded a police commander $20 million for his discrimination and retaliation lawsuit in 2019. Tonight, the I-team's Christine Byers brings us an exclusive interview with a woman who filed a lawsuit just weeks ago claiming a police commander sexually harassed her and retaliated against her when she wouldn't go along with his advances. What he did was really wrong, and I'm not okay. Brittany Young was 21 years old when she started working for St. Louis County Lieutenant Jeffrey Hoots. He really started talking to me whenever I became a lifeguard and I was like always wearing my county issued swimsuit. She said he asked her to join him at the park ranger's office as an administrative aide. So how soon after you started did things start going wrong? The first day I started working with them. She said Hoots planned training exercises to teach park rangers how to defuse situations. He would always have me pretend to be his girlfriend with these scenarios. Put his like arm around me and stuff. Now she's filed one of two lawsuits that accuse Hoots of sexual harassment and county commanders of not doing enough to stop it and punish him. What the department needs to understand is what you tolerate, you condone. The second lawsuit involves County Police Lieutenant Michael Reeveschneider. He's accusing the department of retaliating against him for reporting misconduct involving Hoots and others. 
The I-team looked into court records and found three other retaliation lawsuits are pending against the department. Reef Schneider's lawsuit says plaintiff learned Lieutenant Hoots was engaging in inappropriate sexual relationships with one or more subordinate county park rangers. He says he then told Chief Mary Barton Hoots was, quote, reassigning rangers to undesirable posts in retaliation for complaints of sexual harassment. Lauren Sierra is Young's attorney. Her firm is representing others who say Hoots harassed them and have started the process of filing claims with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I can tell you that it's it's more than one and it's more than two, uh, and we actually expect that number to rise. Sierra said the EEOC process takes months before a lawsuit ever gets filed. And it's hard to trust in these entities when we see that there are things happening that we wouldn't want to happen to our family members or our children. These allegations are really, really serious. In her lawsuit, Young accuses Hoots of sending her inappropriate pictures. There would be times where he would like Snapchat me, him drinking wine when he was drunk, um, and he would text me when he was drunk as well. But he did ask me, do you date older men? And I told him no. That's when Young says Hoots made her a dispatcher, a job she said he knew she didn't want. I never was physical with him, uh, but I was punished as a result. She said she kept the harassment a secret for months. Uh, I didn't really know who to go to about it because he was our commander. So I was kind of scared too because I was afraid nobody would believe me. At some point, a formal complaint was filed on Hoots. Young said she was interviewed by Internal Affairs about him. He was transferred out of the Park Rangers Division in March 2021. The department says it won't comment on pending litigation or personnel issues, so it won't say whether he was ever disciplined. The county has not yet filed its response to Young's lawsuit. Hoots declined to comment, too. He retired in April after nearly 30 years on the force. So what are you hoping will come of all of this? Most of all, I'm really hoping that the St. Louis County Police Department will stop covering for people like him. For the IT, Christine Byers, five on your side. Mary Barton is no longer chief of police. Brittany Young is working with the park rangers again for a different commander and as an administrative aide. She said training scenarios are no longer part of their protocol. To watch more of our IT investigations, just download 5 Plus. It's free for your Roku or Fire TV devices. All right, we could use some rain in the bi-state area, and Jim says there is a chance we could get some over the weekend. There is, and you know, the good thing about this, Mike, that the latest models are still indicating Saturday evening late into the overnight hours into early Sunday. So not a lot, probably a quarter of an inch. A lot of the models are showing, but we'll take it because it is so dry. 81 degrees right now, down from a high of 93 and 45% on that humidity. So that has not been too bad all day. And the same for tomorrow. Things look pretty comfortable, but still kind of hot. Uh, 91 for that high today, uh, 69 for the overnight low, and 88 and 69 are the average and no rainfall today. So humidity day by day, we're just looking at the dew points and they climb close to 70 on Saturday. So that's the day we're going to get really hot, steamy and humid throughout the day. So temperatures at about 97 for the high and with that humidity, it's going to feel like 105 at its peak. But then once we get through the day Sunday, you'll feel that less humid air and then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and even in the Thursday, things look really low in terms of humidity. All right, so we've said complexes of storms out in Kansas. They moved to Kansas City. They've been getting rain. In fact, cool today, mainly in the 70s. Then even Columbia, some light showers. But for us, just cloud cover. You see the future cast here. Another cluster moving in at about noontime tomorrow, but then it weakens as it pushes into the area. So high pressure still squashing our chances for rain. But then it is Saturday evening right there. Here's the latest model showing that chance of showers and storms right over the entire area. Let's hope this happens 930 PM. Then watch as they grow into a cluster of storms, according to this model. And a lot of the models are now indicating maybe right along this front that comes through here, a pretty strong one and then showers and storms, some heavy rain, but it's quick and it's fast. It gets out of here and then we really dry out again later Sunday and into early next week. So rain totals look like this, not a lot, but hopefully a quarter of an inch because we need it.
All right, 10 day forecast 91 for Friday. It's dry, partly sunny Saturday 97. It's hot storms, mainly late evening into the overnight 86 Sunday rain comes to an end early and it gets a little bit cooler on Monday. Look at that high of 83. Uh, less humid air, Mike, and beautiful weather uh, really through Thursday, and then it gets kind of hot again. All right, Jim, thanks. Frank is here with sports. Well, Mike, the Cardinals had a rough day in Milwaukee. A St. Louis kid had a great day at the College World Series. And what happened with E.J. Liddell at the NBA draft tonight? If you have a tip for the Five on Your Side I team, call us at 314-444-5231 or email fiveonyourside at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. I realize that some of you may not care about the NBA draft, but we have a local story. E.J. Liddell won two state titles at Belleville West. Then Liddell became an All-American at Ohio State. Almost every mock draft had him going in the first round. Didn't happen. Jay Billis kept mentioning his name in the first round as the best player available. Now, this is video tonight from St. Clair Country Club in Belleville. EJ and his family had a huge party in anticipation of what was supposed to be an incredible night. We are early in the second round, 35 picks in, and EJ has not been selected. Our Corey Miller, who is there, described the atmosphere as, quote, rough. Now, the draft brought some big surprises. Paolo Bancaro from Duke was the first pick to Orlando. Nobody thought that was going to happen. The Oklahoma City Thunder chose seven foot one center Chet Holmgren out of Gonzaga, who's so skilled and so thin. And Houston chose the guy who was supposed to go first, Jabari Smith from Auburn. All right, let's talk Cardinals. If pitching really is 75% of the game or so, things will have to change with this rotation. 60% of their anticipated starting rotation is underperforming, including today's starter in Milwaukee. Another tough day for Dakota Hudson. Four and a third, seven hits, five runs, three coming here on a homer by Tyrone Taylor, and it's four to two Brewers at this point. Lars Newbar tore into this one to make it a four to three game. But the Brewers have this bad man named Josh Hader who can throw it 100 or he can fool you with that off-speed stuff. And the two -two. Brewers win it 6-4. to four. The two teams are now tied for first place in the division. So I'd love to see our St. Louis kids thrive on the big stage, especially when they are underdogs. Kevin Graham, a Westminster grab, is a star for Ole Miss. They were the last team to get into the NCAA tourney. Now they're just two teams left. Facing Arkansas, Kevin is really not known for his defense, but he looks like Barry Bonds and left on that play. What this kid does is hit an RBI double here. He had two hits today, and his OPS is 948. The Arkansas coach said he has nightmares about Kevin Graham. Dylan DeLuca threw a complete game shutout for the Rebels. They win it 2-0. They will face Oklahoma in the College World Series Finals. The Gateway Archers are preparing for the 16th Ultimate Beatball Tournament this weekend. Beatball is an adaptive form of baseball for athletes who are visually impaired. The Mind's Eye event raises funds and awareness for the sport by bringing people together from across the country. Oakville native Kyle Bora will play in the Beatball World Series next month and says this sport has changed his life. I think it's huge for the confidence of blind people, um, the camaraderie. You get to see other blind people um, doing things that you don't think that blind people should be doing. So when you're first introduced to it, you um, get a lot of uh, mental health from it. It really is amazing. You can't see the ball, no. and they're making solid contact. They're incredible athletes. All right, thanks, Frank. Well, Amazon's Alexa can do a lot, and now the digital assistant is working to bring back the dearly departed. 
Pride celebrations will take over downtown St. Louis this weekend, and you can join us this Sunday at the Grand Pride Parade downtown beginning at 11 a.m. If you can't make it, you can stream it live on the 5 Plus app. Just search 5 on your side on your Roku or Fire TV. FedEx is taking steps to protect your packages. The courier giant announced drivers will soon send your photos of your packages on your porch. This will be for deliveries not requiring signatures. FedEx will begin rolling this out soon. It should be widely available by the holiday season. Amazon's Alexa is working on a new feature and some may find it creepy. It changes Alexa's voice if you want to sound like a dead one. They apparently will need at least a short recording of your loved one. There's no details on if or when this feature will go live. Ketchup is a popular condiment, but what about it as a cool treat? The Frenchicle is basically French's ketchup in the form of an ice pop. If you want to try it, you'll need to head to Canada within the next few days. No thanks. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. And Jimmy's guest tonight, Evan Rachel Wood and Chris Hemsworth. Don't forget to start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4.30 a.m. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.